Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and I think it's about time we did a little bit of a debrief in regards to the mission to Mars, the Perseverance mission that essentially landed just over a week ago from when I'm making this video. Since the original landing, a lot of new media and a lot of images, videos and even sounds have already been released, and so I wanted to mention some of them briefly in this video and also just generally talk about where this mission is headed and what's going to be happening for the next few weeks. And by the way, a lot of these images and a lot of these videos that I'm going to be using in this video, they're actually from the NASA website that has over 5,000 different raw images already released, and you can also check it out by using the link in the description below. And so anyway, it's now been over 23 years since the original mission of the first rover to Mars. The rover we refer to as the Sojourner, part of the Mars Pathfinder mission. And now, over 23 years later, after several successful missions such as Spirit, Opportunity and Curiosity, NASA succeeded once again by landing this rover that we refer to as Perseverance extremely close to the location where they intended to land it, approximately 2 kilometers away from the center. And although the original technology for landing on Mars was actually using airbags, such as the ones you see being tested right here, over the years, NASA realized that using Sky Crane, along with a relatively powerful parachute, was actually a much more efficient and a much more likely to succeed way to land things on Mars. And this is exactly what they did this time, and it was absolutely brilliant and extremely perfectly executed. But unlike all of the previous missions, this time we have actual HD footage showing us exactly what happened here, and not only allowing us to see the details of this landing, but also allowing us to thus analyze these landings in order to essentially plan this for some of the future missions involving humans. But let's actually watch this again because this is absolutely mind-blowing. So first of all, this is the deployment of the parachute, apparently one of the most powerful parachutes ever tested. Now you might have already heard about this, but the JPL team decided to put a little bit of an easter egg inside the parachute. This pattern that you see right here is binary code and it only took internet a few days to figure out what all of this was saying and what exactly it was referring to. The letters here translate to their mighty things. A phrase that's originally attributed to the former president Teddy Roosevelt that's also used as a kind of a mantra or a kind of a slogan that a lot of scientists follow at the JPL or Jet Propulsion Laboratory. But what's unusual here is that we get to see something falling off from the rover right before the parachute is released which you can sort of see right here if I play this in slow motion. It's not entirely clear what exactly came off and if it's going to affect the mission in some way, but it happened nevertheless. At the same time, right before the parachute is released, we know that the probe was already enduring insane temperatures, probably close to about 1500 degrees Celsius or about 2700 Fahrenheit, but a few seconds later we also get to see the heat shield being released and it slowly starts falling toward the ground. Now this is actually something we've never seen before and this is an absolutely magnificent image. But unfortunately, even though we were also supposed to be getting audio from this, once again apparently the microphone failed. At least the landing microphone. So we don't really get to hear anything, but we do get to see things. And once the heat shield came off, it was now the time for the flight computer to start looking for the precise location where it's supposed to try to land. It was actually trying to locate this oval shape right here that's roughly around 7.7 .7 by 6.6 .6 kilometers or about 4.8 miles by 4.1 miles. And in the end, as you can see from this image, it was only about 2 kilometers or about mile and a half away from the center. And this is actually an amazing location to be landed in. Let me show you why. First of all, based on the images that we see here, it's right next to an ancient river delta. This is essentially where there was an ancient river flowing through this and will thus have a lot of different sediments and a lot of different deposits. And this is also a very flat location as well. And so navigating here and also exploring this area is not going to be very difficult. It's also going to be extremely exciting, especially because it seems to be right on the bank of that ancient river. We've also received some of the first panorama shots from the probe, and it shows us that this location is, for the most part, is free of any kind of large rocks, any large boulders, or any other hazards that are usually responsible for breaking the probes or for breaking the wheels of the probes. So in that sense, NASA got super lucky with the place where they landed. 
And honestly, the landing video and of course the images from the probe are absolutely mind-blowing. Not only because this is the first time we've ever seen something like this, but also because this will allow us to now scientifically investigate what exactly happens to, for example, the Martian ground, when, as you'll see in a few seconds here, suddenly there are a lot of engines firing onto the ground in order to land something. We know that there is probably going to be a huge disturbance underneath, but how exactly it affects the ground and what exactly happens to the rocks underneath is really important for us to know in order for us to prepare for some of the future missions when we're going to be landing humans. Now these images and these videos are absolutely brilliant. You get to see everything from different angles, the landing, the suspension of the rover by the sky crane, the actual procedure that it uses to land the rover, and then you'll see it flying away any second now as it essentially escapes in order to avoid crashing into the rover. Now one of the questions someone was asking me during the stream I did last week was what actually happens to the sky crane itself? Well, we know that it crashes and we know that it basically becomes kind of useless after that. But where it crashed is another question. And we finally have images of that too. First of all, the scientists were able to see the impact cloud as the sky crane crashed a little bit farther away from the probe. And it didn't really take them long to find out where everything else was as well by using one of the orbiters, specifically this one right here, Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, that has extremely powerful cameras and is able to see everything from the orbit and even took this incredible image from the orbit showing us the landing of the Perseverance with the parachute being right here and this being the probe with the heat shield still on. And so it turns out that it crashed approximately 700 meters away from the Curiosity probe with the parachute being somewhere right here and the heat shield being a little bit farther away. And it only took a few days for the scientists to produce this image showing different spectra of the actual crash landing with various debris as well showing us exactly what happens when the sky crane crashes next to the probe. And all of this is going to be extremely important for the scientists in upcoming missions when we want to land humans here. We're going to have various parts coming off rockets when the humans are landing, so it's important to understand what's going to happen to all of this and if it's going to affect the future colonies in any way as well. So this is not just for fun, this is actually science in order to plan future missions. And in terms of everything else, we know that right now the rover is doing amazingly well, everything seems to be functioning, it's currently actually testing its systems, and it's not going to be roving around or rolling around for at least another week or so. It's also currently downloading all of the necessary software that's supposed to provide all of the guidance and so on, and this will probably take approximately 4 days or so. But overall, everything seems to be working as expected, and everything seems to be functioning perfectly. Now, when it comes to the helicopter, or the flying rover known as Ingenuity, it's going to be making its maiden flight in the next few weeks or so, probably not for another month though. And as you probably know already, its main mission is to essentially test the ability of helicopters to work on Mars, and to also use the only camera on board to essentially take pictures of the nearby locations in order to plan where the rover, where the Perseverance rover, is going to be going next. And once the helicopter is ready and once everything is ready to go, the rover is going to start moving around and is going to start scanning the rocks. Being the most complex rover ever made, it has extremely advanced cameras in it, which means that it can use different spectra of light and analyze these rocks just by looking at them directly. It also has a laser retro reflector on it and a few other advanced tools in order to analyze certain samples a little bit more thoroughly just to see if there are any signs of past life or possibly even signs of current life there as well. In other words, it has a lot of tools on board that do allow for the biosignature analysis. But as you might already know, this is just part one of the mission that is going to be retrieving some of these samples after they're collected by Perseverance. In about six years, NASA is planning to start launching the second part, the retrieval part of all of the samples that are going to be cached inside this little part that you see right here. Several samples are going to be stored in here that are then literally going to be rocket launched by another probe that's going to be landing here sometime around 2030. But the mission itself is still being planned and there isn't even an agreed upon design just yet. And last but not least, while Perseverance was testing its abilities and while it was basically preparing for all of the other missions, it was also able to record certain sounds on the surface of Mars and send back the sounds of Martian atmospheres already. In other words, one of the microphones is actually working. And well, let's listen to what all of this sounds like.
And if we remove the background noise, this is what all of this sounds like without the noise. So maybe not super exciting, but definitely really, really cool. You do get to hear the winds of extremely thin atmosphere of Mars. But this is obviously not the first time we heard all of this, because even the previous mission, the one that's still operating on the surface known as Inside, was able to send us a lot of different sounds as well. But in the next few weeks, we're going to be seeing and hearing a lot more and probably a lot of really, really exciting things. When the helicopter gets to fly, this is probably going to be the most exciting part of the entire mission. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot more things we'll be discussing around the time when the Chinese Tianwen-1 mission is going to be landing on Mars as well. But for now though, that's kind of all I wanted to mention in this video. There are going to be a lot of new things coming out and a lot of things to talk about, so make sure to subscribe and make sure to share this video with someone who loves learning about space and sciences. Let's finish this video by looking at some of the most amazing images of Mars taken by the past missions, including this one right here, showing us the first ever Martian tornado. But anyway, maybe support this channel Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description or by joining the channel memberships that are now available as well. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. I'll see you tomorrow. Stay wonderful. And as always, bye-bye.